Um, good evening, my name is Andy. Um, I'm normally in Shanghai, I'm here for vacation. But uh, um, if you find this talk interesting, please buy me a drink. And uh, <laughs> today I'm going to talk about TypeScript. Um, a, bit, a little bit background, JavaScript is um, dynamically typed, which means you can have a variable name A, and it can basically be anything you like. And uh, the compiler, doesn't, there's no compiler. The, the engine doesn't know what it is. And uh, you as an author often don't know what it is. That also means when your program becomes larger and larger with many, many um, authors, um, the kind of variable that it can have, the, the content it can have, um, becomes very complicated. Sometimes you see something, some function like that, a config. At, at first, it was one or two lines. Then it grows and grows and grows. And in the end, when you take over, you don't really know what config can be. So um, that's where the people have this idea of introducing static type to JS, which is actually a, good, a, a very old news. Um, ActionScript, which was a, a, a dialect of ECMAScript, uh, we already have that in 2006. But we all know that um, um, Apple killed uh, Flash, and uh, as a collateral damage, action script is basically dead as well. And then it's also proposed in ECMAScript 4, which, um, as we all know, for political reasons, is also dead. So, um, you know, for 10 years, uh, we don't have it. And, uh, but meanwhile, we have also all sorts of other similar ideas. Google's uh, web toolkit, which transpiles. Uh, <coughs> Java to JavaScript, which is, of, of, of course, um, strongly typed. And then Dart, which was by Google, same idea. And uh, Hack, which is by Facebook, is um, also about introducing static type to PHP. And uh, Python is the most extreme one. They actually officially support um, uh, static type, type hinting, really, uh, in 3.5. Uh, Python is basically dynamic. Flow type. Yeah, and I will talk about it. Relax. <laughs> and then. Uh, there comes TypeScript, which is um, a Microsoft product, it all ticks. <laughs> and uh, it is compiled down to um, ES6 or 5 for um, browser execution. And uh, it supports, if I remember correctly, all ES6 features and many you know, ES7, ES8 features. And uh, it gives you compile time type check, which means there's no runtime check. So um, you, know, you could still write 40 programs. And then flow. Um, two very similar ideas. One is by um, Microsoft, the other by Facebook. Very similar goals, um, very similar syntax and semantics. Unfortunately, not 100% compatible, which means your TypeScript program will likely work um, with flow, but um, probably not, and the other way around. So you need some minor modifications to, trans um, to transform code within, between them. Um, I believe that TypeScript has better tooling by ecosystem, but it's, um, it's not a tonight's point. And I think either one is fine. Now, um, talk is cheap. Let's do some coding. So um, I'm going to use this um, Visual Studio code, which is also a um, Microsoft thing, if you don't mind. And uh, <laughs> Let's uh, let's do something. Uh, let demo dot ts. Okay. So as I said, um, if it works in ES six, it still can you see it? So uh, if it says tr equals to hello, it works. And uh, but it has the added benefit that uh, you got all this um, nice completion because the editor knows that it's a string. Also, uh, if you try to assign a uh, number to it, it will say, oh, no, it's not, uh, no, it's not assignable. And uh, also, you can uh, explicitly declare something. You can say, um, as is a string, then you can um, do basically the same thing. And also, you can do something like, um, say, b is an array of Boolean. And then when you push stuff into it, it would check, oh, man, you know, it's a 1. It's not a Boolean. And uh, also, you get something like, excuse me, like um, when you pop something out of it, um, 
you, the compile, uh, the editor knows that it's a boolean that's getting being popped out. Now let's talk about functions. So um, functions basically is an input and output. Both can be typed. Let's say you had two numbers, which is a, which is a number, then b, which is a number, then the output is a number, and return a plus b. Okay, and this will work, and you, if you try to use that, you say uh, 1 plus 2, you know, that works. If you try something crazy like um, uh, 1 plus 2, you get an error because, um, you know, it's not, it doesn't conform with the definition. Um, then let's talk about um, objects. These are primitive types. Objects are defined by interfaces and types and classes. Uh, interface is basically just something like, you know, you define the shape of an object, you say, oh, config is true, uh, it's a Boolean, and so something like ID is a number. Then you can declare something as that, and then uh, you, get a, you get a typing, you need an ID is a number, and you can't do this anymore, hello, because um, ID is a number and trying to assign it to a, a string. In addition, um, interfaces can be extended, so you don't have to um, do everything again. Let's say you somehow have an async config, I don't know why, and uh, yes, uh, it's done. Uh, property, which is a Boolean, then you can have an async <coughs> config, which is an async <coughs> config. Then this thing will have a is done property. It will also have a ID property inherited from the config stuff. Mm, interface is usually used to define something that doesn't exist before, and you can also use something like code type to usually to combine things that you already have. Let's say sometimes you have an ID which you don't, you don't know whether it's a number or a string, but it has to be either a number or a string. Then you can define something like this, and then you can define an um, ID variable which is of that type. So it can be one, it can also be one, both works, but it can't be a Boolean, true. It doesn't work because um, it's either a number or a string. Mm, types. Let's talk something um, more advanced. You can also use um, what's called generics in TypeScript. That basically means that your type is um, some, somewhat variable, has some flexibility. One example is promise. You know, when you use a promise in uh, JavaScript, you don't really know what's going to be resolved into. But with TypeScript, you can. Let's say. Um, I'm going to make a type called a number promise, which is a promise you know, of a number. Then um, I'm going to define this thing as number promise. And uh, for simplicity, let's just say it's um, resolved to 5, no, 42 maybe. And uh, then the interesting thing is you can do this. And then you can say result, you know, console.log result. The compiler will know that result is a number because MP is a number promise. A number promise is a promise of a number. So when it is, you know, then the result has to be a number. So you, here you can't say something like, um, uh, what can you do with a number? Let me see this. You can still do that. So, um, sorry. So this is going to be a number that the compiler knows. Another use of generics is to do something like a clone. So let's say when you want to write a, write, a pro, write a function to clone an object, you don't know beforehand what's going to be cloned. But still, you can try something like this. It's going to be cloned, and it has to take a parameter called t, which is the type of the input. And the return is going to be t. And uh, let's just define it as json dot pass json dot stringify input. Let's just say this clone. Now you have, let's say, um, you have an object. It's like this. A is one. Oh, excuse me. B 
base 2. And then you clone it, cloned object <coughs> equals to clone, clone object. Now, although you didn't explicitly specify the type of cloned object, uh, the compiler still knows that it has an A, which is a number, and a B, which is a number. Now, uh, error, because um, <coughs> the type doesn't work, because it can guess <coughs> from here. And then it flows into this and this, and so it knows. Mm, what else can I talk about? Oh, let's talk about classes. So let's say you want to model a boy who's trying to get into the bar under age. And uh, what you could do in uh, JavaScript is use some crazy hacks to try to hide, uh, hide a property, let's say in an age, which is you know, number. Let's call it 16. And uh, it has a say age function, which return age plus 2. You know, he, he tries to, sorry. Try to look 18, but couldn't. But then if you have a boy thing, um, every user of this variable can directly access its um, property. And if you try to hide it, you need to do some crazy maneuvers. Uh, in TypeScript, you don't have to. You can just do this, and uh, you get an error. Uh, because age is private, you can't do that anymore. So you have to say age. Right, which is you know, 18. So um, this is about hiding data. Mm. Also, interfaces can be combined with classes. So um, if you, uh, this is very useful when you have a large team. So you need to, um, different, team, different teammates need to cooperate with each other. You might want to define the interface first. Let's say you know we all want to build a guy which has a first name, which is a string, then a, a family name, which is also a string. Then different people can uh, implement different uh, classes on it. Uh, interface, and you can say it implements guy interface, which is an error because I haven't implemented this too. Let's just copy it and say, hello. Well, then it will work. Then, of course, some, some other guy can implement it differently, as long as it uh, fits the definition here. All right. Um, next, I want to show you about uh, three party libraries. So. Um, of course, you don't write all your JavaScript program in one go. Uh, you will use other people's code. But other people's code are not written in TypeScript in general. And uh, so what the community come up with is um, they have this thing called definitely typed. So everybody can contribute definition for the libraries that didn't have uh, type shape, that doesn't define their functions uh, clearly or what they are. So. Um, Let's say we want to use slow dash. Uh, normally, you um, init it, and uh, you install slow dash. So this slow dash is just a JavaScript version. It doesn't have the type definitions. But you can also do, what you can also do is do this um, at types thing, slow dash, which downloads the uh, TypeScript definition, which um, it, has, it does has one. So um, you can say something like import everything as uh, underscore from low dash. Then you can use it as if it was written with TypeScript. Uh, that means, for example, you can say something like um, uh, one, two, three, and, uh, and let's say we want to square them. So um, the the, first of all, the compiler knows that it's, this parameter is a number, and uh, array equals to this. So you also get this number, because it knows that you are trying to convert uh, square numbers to numbers. If you do this uh, one, for example, then array will become an array of strings, because every number will become strings. 
and uh, also you got mm, let's call it let. Also, if you use this, let's stick with the squaring version, and you try to put something that's uh, it, something that doesn't make sense, you get an error because um, you know it shouldn't work because you can't time say a string to another string. So um, this is basically how TypeScript works. How much time do I have? Two minutes. Uh, any React people? One, two, OK. Right. So um, <laughs> let me show a little bit about how TypeScript worked with React, which was what, I, what I've been doing in the past six months. So um, to do that, first we need a tsconfig file, unfortunately, which is, um, which is just, as the name suggests, uh, it configs the TSX. Uh, the good thing is, um, Compiler options, I think. JSX um, is smart enough that it actually auto completes your options. And uh, let's call it React. And uh, so in React, you got this idea of components. Um, install React, ampersand install. Let's install the everything. And uh, so import asterisk as React from React. Uh, it, it has error because uh, the type isn't done. And when it's installed, it's OK. So let's say you want to create something called my view. You can say it's a um, React component. The interesting thing is it takes two parameters and uh, prop types. Uh, let's say ID is a string, type state, types, uh, whatever, number. So you can f what you can do is you can, when you define this uh, React component, you can fill in the, its props and states, state types. And uh, which means when you use it, uh, you can boolean, oh, sorry. True, when you try to do this, it's an error because you define the prop as a string. Oh, sorry. You define it as a, uh, as a string, but you are giving a boolean, so it won't work. Uh, instead, you can say it's high, then it will work. So that's how it works with React. And also, the state can be typed. So when you are using um, state, if any, um, it, it can also help you to check your type. And uh, that's all for my presentation. So time for one question for Andy. Yes, sir? Oh, good question. Um, so um, first of all, what, there are many ways to do this. The most uh, loose way to do this is to say that this object is an, of any type. So um, you know, oh, oh, sorry, it can be object. So it can be you know anything without an error, but that's stupid, right? So what you can further do is to say that, um, let's say your object is. Um, the key is a string, and everything is number. Let's say whatever. So um, you can what you can do is to do this. Who we'll say it's an object? So um, so what you can do is to say you know a is one. That's okay, but b is um, true. That won't be okay because um, you said that all, all all things are numbered. But if you want to do a deeper, let's say you know A is a, you want to define something that uh, dynamically um, A is a number and B is a so so the the shape is defined um, dynamically, then it won't work because uh, TypeScript only checks your type uh, in compile time. 
when in uh, dynamic time the all types are gone. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you.